Hi guys and welcome to another Crafty Not Shifty card making video. Today I'm taking part in the August hashtag Pugist Art. This is a hashtag that was put together for different artists and crafters to use on YouTube. You can search with painting, art journaling, crafting, upcycling, sculpture, animation, digital, textile, illustration, multimedia, mixed media, cards, scrapbooking or paper crafting to get all different types of Pugist Art videos. So here is mine, it's a card making video. I'm going to be using the stamp set from My Favourite Things. I'm going to be stamping the um, horse and also the hay bale. So I wanted the hay bale and the horse with kind of another horse um, kind of meeting. I wanted them both to be kind of meeting at this little hay bale stack so I'm going to use a mirror stamping technique to create a reverse image of the horse that we have there on the right. So I've placed on the horse and the base of the hay bale and I'm going to be stamping both of those in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I've got those on my stamp press to make sure that the positioning is perfectly aligned and I'm just going to press both of those down and then move on to stamping the hay bale. Once I've got both of these um, stamped, I'm going to go into how to create the mirror image of the horse. This is a really great technique. Um, often you'll want to have a additional stamp um, that is as you know a mirror image of the one that you have. So I'm going to place that here. I've mounted it on an acrylic block. And for this technique, all you need is a large kind of background stamp. I'm using this Love Knot stamp here because it's got a really nice flat surface with not much detail. Normally you would mount this on the block and stamp it down like this, but I'm actually going to mount it upside down so I've just got a really smooth slick surface. And You can do this with any stamp, um, you just want to make sure that it's got um, very little open space on the stamp and that it's bigger than the image you're trying to get. So I've inked this up with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink again and I'm just stamping that straight up and down onto the back of my background stamp. And then I'm going to use that to stamp the horse onto the background. And it's as easy as that. It takes a little bit of practice to get this mirror image um, stamping perfect. And it won't look exactly the same as the original as the um, original stamp. So you can see there some of the lines aren't quite as crisp as on the original. But I think it stamps really well. So I've stamped each of those images onto some masking paper from Simon Says Stamp and I'm just cutting those out using my um, Spring Assist Tonic Studios scissors. These are really great for fussy cutting. And I'm also using my Fiskars Cloud Punch to punch out two um, clouds from the masking paper. I'm going to place these over the um, images that I've stamped down and place the two clouds up above um, so we protect the surface of the card when applying a distressed background. So to hold it all in place I'm just using some um, repositionable glue on the back of the card and I'm placing each of those masks on top of the images and then there's those two clouds that I'm just going to place down on the top. To create the background of this um, card I'm going to be using some Distress Inks um, by Tim Holtz and a mini ink blending tool to apply those. So I'm just removing that backing from the cloud and pressing that down. The last thing I'm going to do is take a piece of um, post-it tape and I'm just going to cut a curve into this. So this is going to mask off the bottom section of the card that I want to use for a grass area and I will keep hold of the other part of that to use um, after I've applied the sky. So I've got my tumble glass ink and I've got my Simonson stamp grid paper in the background and I'm just starting off the page and gently bringing that in. So I've sped this up quite a bit. Um, I don't want you to be too bored watching me uh, ink blend. Whenever you're creating a background like this, you want to start off the page and just bring the ink in with a really light hand to make sure that you don't get any kind of crisp edges. And you don't want that circle um, ink blending tool to just leave a perfect circle of ink anywhere on your card base. I'm just making sure that I get a really nice um, blue line where that masking uh, tape is. And then I'm coming in with some slightly darker ink, I believe that this is the Salty Ocean ink, and I'm also um, using the Mermaid Lagoon ink. So it's the Mermaid Lagoon, Salty Ocean, 
and the tumble glass blue that I'm using to create this background. So I'm just darkening up the edges there and you can see on the right hand side of the card I've got a small kind of circle where I've pressed too hard with my ink blending tool so it's left kind of very sharp edge so I'm just going to work to blend that, that out until we've got a really nice smooth blue background. If you wanted, you could use um, a patterned paper and stamp the images on top um, or stamp them and use the matching dies that I showed you earlier in the video to cut out the images and stick them on top of a background and of course you could also watercolour the background. So now I'm just going to peel away that bottom section there that was masked off and you can see that that's, um, that's just left a perfectly white section. So I've brought in the top of the post-it tape which is kind of the opposite area of the curve and I'm using the Mode Lawn Distress Ink to create some grass. Here I'm using the um, a, a finger dobber to apply the ink rather than the blending tool just because it is a small area and I want quite a thick layer of this tumble, um, sorry, a thick layer of this Mode Lawn ink. So a small section of my paper did curl up there and so I'm just applying some adhesive and smoothing that down and you'll never be able to tell once that's stuck into place. Okay, so now is the big reveal. I'm going to peel off each of those paper masks and you can use these over and over again. Um, so I will just peel those up and I'm actually going to stick them back onto the original backings and I'll just keep those in the back of my um, stamp set. So if I do need them again, I can use them. Um, if, you, if you're not a fan of fussy cutting and you didn't want to cut each of those individual masks out but you did want masking paper, you could always use the matching dies. Um, it will leave a small white edge around each of these images um, but that's okay if that's the look that you're going for. I wanted the colour to come right up to the edge of each of these which is why I went to the trouble of fussy cutting each of those. So now I'm going to bring in some of my... Um, Spectrum Noir alcohol ink markers. I've got um, TN3, TN4 and TN5 and I'm just starting with the lightest colour and applying that almost um, completely all over the horse to really saturate the paper with that colour and then I'll apply some highlights um, or some shadows rather with the medium colour and then I'll further define that with the darkest colour and then I'll blend those out with the medium and finally finish with the lightest colour. Now I'm not, um, I'm by no means a expert when it comes to alcohol ink markers, which is why I've sped this colouring up so much. Um, there's so many great people out on YouTube if you want to see how to use the Spectrum Noir or the Copic markers. I'm just doing a very basic um, colour blend here. And I'm going to colour both of the horses using the exact same colours. So I'll just show you this one and then I'll speed through the, um, the next one. So now I'm using TN2 for the horse's nose, um, for the muzzle area and also for the hooves. I'm going to finish that off with EB2 in the, um, the mane and the tail and also I've brought back in one of those um, EB colours, I believe that's EB3 for the tail and the mane. Okay, so now I'm going to use EB7 and EB8 to colour the hay bale um, base. I'm just bringing the colour in from each of the sides to leave kind of a white section in the centre, starting with the lighter of the two colours, then using the darkest colour, and again just pulling that out a little bit, a little bit further each time, and then I'll go over that to smooth it out with the lightest colour again, just making sure that there's a small bit of the white still left for a, um, a nice kind of wood grain pattern on this base. So now I've got GB4, 5 and I believe that was 6, and I'm just scribbling some of that colour down onto the hay bale. I didn't want to make this colouring really smooth um, as I wanted it to have kind of a hay bale texture so I'm just applying really small kind of strokes and dashes of each of those colours and kind of squiggling um, the colour in. I guess this is a similar technique, a really basic um, technique that you could use for colouring hair as well to make sure that it has that kind of random um, pattern and it's not just a really smooth blend of colour. 
So I'm doing the same thing here, I started with the lightest, went to the medium colour and then to the darkest colour, then back to the medium to smooth it out and then to the very lightest. And if you ever need to go over the top of these alcohol ink markers to apply more shadows or highlights, that's fine, they work really well. Okay, so now I'm using the Eusetic collection of um, dyes by Clearly Besotted. These actually go with a matching stamp set, but I've just cut out the speech bubble here. And I'm going to use the Hey There sentiment from the My Favourite Things, the Whole Herd stamp set. I'm going to ink that up again in the um, same Memento ink that I've used for the rest of the card. I really like this um, this sentiment. I like the uh, the kind of pun of the H-A-Y spelling of hay as the two horses meet over the hay bale. Okay, so now I'm going to create my card base. I'm using some blue cardstock from Simon Said Stamp. And I'm just trimming that down in half and I'm going to score that in the centre at five and a half. And that will make a four and a quarter by five and a half top folding note card. So I'll fold that over and just reinforce that crease with my bone folder. And now I'm just going to um, I'm just going to pull out the way this um, kind of really inked up piece of Simon Says Stamp grid paper and get a fresh sheet there. Okay, so now the card base is created, I can bring back in my stamped panel. And I'm just going to peel off each of those cloud masks to reveal the um, nice white clean cl uh, clouds underneath. One of the reasons that I didn't do this any earlier is that Distress Ink reacts really well with any kind of moisture or water. So I didn't want to peel those off and then potentially have um, any of the ink transfer from my fingers into those white cloud sections. Okay, so now I'm using my Jelly Roll Black pen just to darken up the eyes on each of those horses. I feel like they got ever so slightly lost um, after I'd applied so much of the Spectrum Noir alcohol pens over the top. So I'm just darkening those up with the Jelly Pen. I really should have wiped my Jelly Pen off to the side before I did this. Um, you can see the horses kind of ended up with really big crazy eyes um, because I got a bit of an ink splotch on one of them. But that's okay, I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Okay, so now I'm picking up a black um, fine liner pen. I'm just going to apply some stitching detail to the outside edge of the speech bubble. It just looked a little bit plain um, as it was, so I'm just applying those tiny um, dash lines for like a faux stitched effect around the edge. You could also use your um, Tim Holtz Distress Inks just to ink up the edges of this, but I really like the effect of the stitch. So I'm applying some glue to the back of my card panel and pressing it down to the card front. And I made sure to cut the card panel a quarter of an inch smaller on um, either side just to make sure that it left some of that blue card base showing through once I'd stuck down the panel. I really like how the blue coordinates with the blue sky. So I'm using some um, 3D pop dots here, um, these are just from Hobbycraft and I'm placing those onto the back of the die cut speech bubble just to add a little bit of dimension to this card. Um, it's completely one layer other than this piece of dimension so I think that just adds a little bit of interest and a nice finishing touch to the card front. So I'm just trying to decide exactly where I want that positioning to be. I wasn't sure where I wanted kind of the tail part of the speech bubble to meet um, the horse. I'm just pressing that down and that is it. The card is finished. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I encourage you to check out some more of the hashtag Porgest Art videos. I've really enjoyed watching them and I hope you do too. Bye for now.